Hi, my name is Gary Patterson, and welcome to the second week of our Lenten journey, Longing for Home. Remember to check out the online Facebook discussion, which will include an opportunity to hear from some of the writers who contributed to the United Church Daily Reflections for Lent. Now, this week's Gospel reading is a tough one, but you already knew that the journey wouldn't be easy. Halfway through Mark's Gospel, Jesus drops a bombshell. The Son of Man must undergo great suffering, with the next message being that if this is true for him, then it's going to be true for his disciples. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. Peter jumps in right away, of course. Say it isn't true, Jesus. But Jesus pushes him abruptly aside. Get behind me, Satan. You get the feeling that suffering is pretty central to what Jesus is about. Accepting suffering is never going to be very popular, even with the most dedicated. Most of us, like Lucy from the Peanuts cartoon, would prefer to go from up to upper up. We turn to religion to be comforted, to be reassured. We want to know that if we play by the rules of the game, then we'll win the prize. We lift up our prayers, needy, often selfish, asking for blessings, the good life. We're willing to do the right thing, say the proper words, engage in the approved rituals, even do the occasional good deed, and in return, we hope for protection and prosperity. But perhaps another part of us recognizes Jesus' honesty as we acknowledge the suffering that flashes throughout the Bible, slavery in Egypt, lost in the wilderness, exile in Babylon, the voices of Job, Jeremiah, the psalmist, and, of course, the cross. We don't like to talk about suffering, and yet we know that it is written into the very nature of this universe where everything is constantly coming into being, then falling apart. Supernova explode and galaxies collide. Species emerge and become extinct, and only the fittest survive. I'm reminded of how the Buddha's journey began with his shocked, youthful encounter with sickness, old age, and death, which comes to everyone we love, comes for us. We also know how bloodthirsty we humans are as a species and how much suffering we create among ourselves. Call it sin, call it survival instinct, blame it on greed, pride, anxiety. We are capable of such evil, like nailing people onto crosses, that it can make the blood run cold. Although we know these truths, we try our best not to think about them. The human way is to duck, take cover, protect ourselves, regardless of the cost to others. We seek privilege, status, protection, but Jesus will have none of it. Knowing that without honesty, without a full recognition of suffering, loss, death, and sin, well, we risk living an illusion. Jesus says we need to acknowledge and even embrace the reality of suffering. We must go through it and trust that there is a different kind of living on the other side, because on the third day, says Jesus, the Son of Man will rise again, and further, that those who follow him will find their lives, their truest selves. The Jesus way is to let go, to be vulnerable, to refuse to let fear and suffering control our lives. We are invited into the way of discipleship, which is the way of costly love of self-sacrifice, which is the only way to discover life in all its fullness. And this is true despite all common-sense appearances to the contrary, because God is always part of the equation. There is a love at work within the world that continues to create and recreate that will bring forth new life. So let me finish with a couple of questions. You and suffering, where has it taken you? And what about this call into costly discipleship? Does it appeal? And how does this all speak to a church that is going through hard times and a lot of suffering?